Hi, this is a video about uh, a lecture on pure rotation. So the prerequisites are Newton's law for linear motion and the kinematics, conservation of energy, concept of center of mass, and systems of particles. So first we will define rotation, then we will identify uh, rotational variables, then we will uh, relate the linear and angular uh, variables. Then we'll talk about the kinetic energy of rotation and introduce the concept of rotational inertia. So to begin with, we need uh, some definitions. First, uh, we are dealing with uh, rigid bodies. So a rigid body is a body that can rotate, but uh, without change of its shape. Okay. Uh, of course, the rotation is about an axis, uh, which is fixed in our case. Okay, we often call it delta. And uh, looking at this, uh, so uh, this body here is rotating. And you notice that this blue blue dot, which is part of the body, experiences a circular motion. So every uh, any single point of this body will experience a circular motion. So the only thing we need, in fact, to characterize is circular motion. So this is what we are going to do. Okay. So how to characterize circular motion? We have here a point, uh, we call it M, a mobile point, and it is experiencing a circular motion. So we define a reference line here. Uh, the circular motion is about a uh, center C here, and the M is at distance R. So R is a constant. So when M, let's say, move from here at an in initial time, let's say, it have, has moved by distance a uh, distance s here. So this is a linear variable. We can also define uh, the angle theta from this uh, reference line to this line. Okay, so we have the choice. There are two possible variables: s, which is a linear variable, so it's a distance unit in meter in uh, SI unit, or an angle. A variable, the angle, the SI unit is radian. So we will see that for pure rotation, only one of these uh, two variables is enough. Okay, so theta is sufficient. And uh, we know from basic geometry that theta is equal to S, so the distance, divided by R. Okay, and this gives if you take all these in SI units, you get theta in radian. So in fact, S is a length, R is also a length. So this is dimensionless. But depending, there are different definitions for, for the, the, the angle. So if we use SI unit, we call this radian, even though it's, it's not, uh, it, has, it is dimensionless. All right, so, <coughs> yes, so what about this unit? This is SI unit, but you know, so it's defined like this. We say that theta is one radiant when R equal one and S equal one. Okay, so if you take R equal one and this uh, mobile has moved by one meter, you get one radiant. So as you probably already know, there are different ways of expressing uh, theta, so an angle, so in degree, for example, so or revolution, because uh, a complete revolution can be a unit in itself. It is a two pi radian, or it is a 360 uh, degree. Okay, so one. <coughs> uh, okay. So yes, so one revolution is, if you follow this formula, one revolution is a, a length of 2 pi r 
for s divided by r, so that's 2 pi. Okay. So everything is uh, consistent. In fact, uh, theta is an algebraic uh, variable. So we have to define a positive direction for theta. So uh, we can, in fact, decide uh, the way we want. So in this case, we have selected counterclockwise as a positive direction. And this is a convention. But you can uh, choose what you want. But it's better to go with the convention. So in such a case, uh, theta is considered positive if it is uh, 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 if it corresponds to a counterclockwise motion. So that's why here, for example, in this case, m has moved from here to there. So we we represent this by an arrow here in theta. Okay. So you we still have this equation here. So theta is is algebraic or is a constant so this means that s is also algebraic so if theta is positive s will be positive so in fact you can imagine that this trajectory here is an axis is a curved axis so if you take the origin of that axis here origin here then uh, the object m has traveled distance s along on this axis okay. and uh, uh, any axis have, uh, has a direction so you take the positive direction in this uh, direction okay, in the counterclockwise direction so in such a case you have c sub positive and s positive okay. so of course uh, because theta is an algebraic uh, variable, it can be negative. So you have to be careful uh, when you solve. So let's take an example of clockwise rotation to see that. So here you have mass m and it has a velocity like this. So it's moving this way. So it's moving uh, clockwise. Okay. But you still have the convention that uh, Theta will be positive if you have a counterclockwise uh, direction. So here, if you take this m here, so it has moved, let's say, it is mo moving clockwise. So let's say it was, it was here at the beginning, so it went, in fact, from here to there. All right? So it followed the blue, the blue line. And the angle, corresponding angle, is theta prime okay this this with this arrow so here theta prime is negative okay and s is also negative so that formula is still valid s is negative therefore theta prime is negative and a, uh, r is a constant so it has to be positive all right okay so how to characterize circular motion so we want to know how does theta change with time. This is an interesting uh, thing to know. So we, and we would be happy if we could get an equation of theta of t. So how do, do we do that? So you must remember your, uh, what you have probably done in linear motion. So when we know, want to know how something changes with time, we take the rate of change. Right? So, what is the rate of change of theta? How does, in other words, how does theta changes with time? Okay, so let's take a position theta 1 at time t1 and theta 2 at time t2. The angular displacement is uh, delta theta and the average angular velocity of the body in the time interval uh, delta t is uh, given by delta t divided by uh, delta theta divided by delta t. So we need the instantaneous angular velocity omega. So this is obtained by taking the limit of this when uh, delta t approaches uh, zero. 
and we get the derivative in fact of theta with respect to time. So uh, omega is an algebraic uh, variable like theta, and it, therefore it can be negative. And uh, for example, here uh, it would happen if uh, theta two is smaller than theta one. Okay. In other words, if you have a clockwise, a clockwise rotation. So if we have uh, decided that counterclockwise rotation is positive, uh, it makes sense that the clockwise is uh, so negative for theta and also for uh, omega. Sorry. Okay, so omega can be in fact considered a vector. So uh, remember linear motion, you had the velocity v. So velocity is a vector. So v gives the speed, the magnitude of the velocity, and the direction of the motion. So for rotational motion, rotational motion, you have the angular velocity, omega. It gives the angular speed, which is the rate of change of the angle, and the rotational direction, whether it is counterclockwise or clockwise. So how do we know if it is uh, clockwise or counterclockwise? So uh, m some books advertise the right hand rule. I okay, you can look at this on the internet or in some books. I'm not a fan of this rule. I prefer the rule based on a screw. So I will show you this. Uh, let's take a screw here. So you know that for a clockwise rotation, a screw goes forward, and this is just the, rot the, the direction of omega. So it, it's very easy to understand. If you rotate your screw counterclockwise, then your screw goes backward, and this is the direction of omega. Alright, so uh, pointing, so very often you will have uh, an axis that will be perpendicular to the page. So how do we uh, represent a vector that is perpendicular to the page? Uh, if you have a vector pointing towards you, so out of page, you use this. And uh, if the vector points away from you, in the page you use this. So uh, to remember this you can image uh, an arrow you know, and if the arrow points toward you you will see the tip the tip of the arrow and if it goes away from you you will see the kind of feathers that you can find sometimes on, on arrows. So easy way to, to remember this. Okay, so now we 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 know. Uh, remember, we come back to what we want. We want an equation for theta of t. So we know now the rate of change of theta. It's omega. So if omega is constant, we have mm, m will move at constant speed. But what if it is moving at? Uh, what if the speed changes? So in to understand this, we need to look at the rate of change of omega, okay. which is in fact the acceleration theta of theta. Okay, so we are going to do exactly the same thing that we have done with, with theta, we do the same with omega. Okay, so we have omega 1 at t1 and omega 2 at t2. So the average angular acceleration <coughs> from t1 to t2 is given by this expression. So this is alpha is for acceleration. So it's delta omega divided by delta t. We get the instantaneous angular acceleration alpha by taking the limit when delta t approaches zero, the omega dt. 
Okay, the unit is a radian uh, per square per second squared. So again, we have seen theta can be negative, omega can be negative. So alpha is also an algebraic uh, variable. So yes, what is next? So now we have theta, we have omega, the speed, and alpha, the acceleration. So, uh, so okay, uh, omega is the derivative of theta, alpha is the derivative of omega, so therefore the second derivative of theta. Uh, we, uh, we have the right to ask ourselves uh, what about the rate of change of alpha? Because if alpha changes, it may be interesting to know how it, ch it changes. Uh, but we realize that there may be no end to this process and uh, in fact we do not need to go further <laughs> okay. yeah. in particular cases you may uh, go further but in most cases we don't need furthermore in, in this course we are only interested in constant angular acceleration which means alpha is a constant therefore it does not change with time, therefore its derivative is zero and we don't need to go further. Ok, so uh, let's summarize, we have these three angular variables. So you will notice that omega does not depend on the distance of the point from the axis. Ok, does not the point from the axis, it doesn't depend on R. And if you look at alpha, it is the same. It does. It only depends on the angle, so it does not depend on the distance. Therefore, whatever point you select, you will have the same omega and alpha. Okay. And this is very convenient, because these two angular variables do not depend on the point that you select in the body. Ok, so uh, this is very interesting. The angular variables are very convenient. So what about uh, this equation that we want, theta of t, when alpha is constant? So mathematically we'll see that the treatment of alpha is the same as that of the linear acceleration r, a, that you have already studied in linear motion. And in fact it, it doesn't matter if you are talking about an angle, or uh, distance, or uh, here I, I take the example of a population of some bacteria, or number of in infected patients, or, or, or whatever. The equations will be the same as long as you are you have a constant acceleration. So the equation will be the same. The only thing is that your variable is the angle instead of being a distance. So let's find out uh, this, e this equation. So we have alpha equal d omega dt. Therefore, we integrate this. We get omega equal alpha t plus ini the initial uh, angular velocity. Okay. Next. We have omega as a function of t, so we know that omega is the derivative of theta, so we integrate this and we get uh, theta as a function of time. So it is half alpha t squared plus omega zero t plus the initial angle. And you have some you've seen already something very similar. Remember, x equal half of a t squared plus v, v zero t initial velocity plus x zero in linear motion. <coughs> so indeed, here you have angular equations, so different types. They are equivalent, uh, similar to the linear equations. And this, this is uh, the relation, the equivalence of, uh, of the variables. So uh, speeds, time remains the time, accelerations, 
and the initial velocities. So the equations for constant acceleration in angular motion are similar to those of constant linear motion. So the important thing is constant acceleration. It doesn't matter if you're what you're talking about there. The equation will all equations with will always be the same. Okay, so we've seen uh, we now have our angular variables. Uh, we want to relate them with a linear variable. So we know that S is a linear variable, it's a distance. Okay. So you also have the velocity is uh, also a linear variable and you know the acceleration. So the acceleration can be decomposed in two perpendicular components, uh, the so-called tangential to tangential to the motion at m and centripetal because it, this component is direct uh, is directed to the center. <coughs> okay, so these are our linear variables. So how to relate them to the the angle. These are the linear variables and we want to relate them to the angle variables. So we are dealing with pure rotation, which means R equal constant is a constant and it means that V is always tangential. Because if you had any component of V perpendicular to the tangent, that would lead to a change of R and <coughs> R is constant in our case. So we already have this relationship, this relation here, we know that. So if we take the, we differentiate S, we will get the velocity. So uh, S S is R theta, so R is a constant, so only theta changes with time, so the derivative is just R d theta dt. And this is omega, therefore V equals R omega. Ok, let's define at this point the period of revolution T. Uh, yes, so this is the time it takes for a full revolution, one revolution. So, um, therefore, it is the distance traveled, which is 2 pi r divided by the speed. Okay, and the speed here is r omega, so r disappears and you find 2 pi divided by omega. Of course, the unit is in seconds. Okay, so uh, we have S and V, what about the acceleration? So we start with the uniform uh, motion. So what happens in uniform motion? So it means the magnitude of the velocity is constant. This means that omega is constant because V equals R omega and that alpha is zero. And uh, okay, dv dt, the derivative of the speed is zero. So this is the derivative of the magnitude. Okay, this is constant. But the velocity as a vector itself is not constant. Because uh, if you take, let's say you take the position here, your velocity will be tangential. It will be like this. So the direction is different from this one. So the, the uh, derivative of the vector velocity is not zero. And the acceleration by definition is the derivative of the velocity. So now, what is the direction of that acceleration? So uh, remember, we acceleration is uh, decomposed in a, a centripetal and a tangential. So if there were a tangential component, 
of A, V would change. Okay, but it does not change. We have uniform motion. Therefore, A is centripetal. So this this is something we know. Centripetal. So in fact, AC centripetal, the centripetal component of the acceleration induces a change in V direction. It doesn't induce a change in uh, V magnitude, only direction. So let's uh, calculate the expression of AC as a function of angular. Uh, okay, so let's let's take a point here at uh, T uh, and angle theta. Then after a time delta t, it has moved to this moved to this location. So at time t plus delta t, it is at angle theta plus delta theta. And uh, the original velocity was v, and the, now the velocity is v prime. So by definition, the acceleration is the change the time rate of change of the velocity. So it is v prime minus v divided by delta t. So we call this v prime minus v delta v. So let's evaluate delta v. So we will reproduce uh, from this point v. So it is written here. And v prime. Okay. So we take this vector, we reproduce it from this point. So we have v prime. So now we want v prime minus v. So we take we start from this point. We follow v prime, and then minus v. So minus v is this way. So we reach this point. So delta v is from this point to this point. So the direction of delta v is this way. So if delta theta is small, we see that the direction of delta v is towards the center. Therefore, we do have a centripetal acceleration. So now, what about the magnitude of delta v? So again, delta theta is small, so uh, we can say that delta v here is in fact v multiplied by delta theta. It is this the, this arc, the length of this arc, and v is equal to v prime in magnitude. Therefore, we have delta v equal v delta theta, so we can uh, write this in our formula. So we get AC in magnitude equal v delta theta divided by delta t. If we take the uh, <coughs> limit when delta t approaches zero, we get uh, of this, we get uh, omega. Therefore, AC equal v omega. Okay, so now v and omega are connected. They are not independent, so we can we can uh, find a formula that contains only omega or only v, only an angular variable omega or only a linear variable v. So v is connected to omega via uh, this equation v equal r omega. So if we get rid of v in this equation, we get ac equal r omega squared. And if we choose to keep only a v, we get ac equal v squared divided by r. <coughs> so now, what if the magnitude of v changes? So now we will have a tangential acceleration. Indeed, uh, let's look here. We have first the, the red dot corresponding to theta 1. So it is v, it has velocity v1. Then at a later time, it has moved by delta theta. So now it's the blue dot at angle theta 2 and it has v2. But this delta theta is very small so v1 and v2 has the same direction, but just different magnitude. All right. Therefore, we do have, because we have a change in v2 minus v1, we do have 
in magnitude, we do have a tangential acceleration. Okay, so dv dt is different from zero. Of course, if v is, is constant, the magnitude, then v2 equals v1, and we do not have any tangential acceleration, and only a centripetal acceleration. Okay, so how to calculate this tangential acceleration? So <coughs> it's quite easy. Uh, A is dv dt. Okay, so if again if v change changes, we have a component of A along the v direction, and this is the tangential acceleration. Uh, and the magnitude is just the derivative of v uh, with respect to time. So let's do it. Uh, here, as a reminder, we have our angular variables and linear variables. So we have established these two relationships already. Uh, so at, we take the derivative of the magnitude of v which is the second derivative of uh, the angle multiplied by r so it is also r derivative of omega this comes, comes directly from this expression and r is constant and d omega dt is alpha so at is equal to r alpha okay so we put together uh, the two components of the acceleration at ac Okay, and we are done with uh, uh, with the kinematics of rotation. Let's have a look at the kinetic energy of rotation. So let's take a system of particle. We have here m1, <coughs> sorry, m1, m2, m3, and uh, whatever number. So we have m i located at a distance r. Ah, oui. okay. So what is K? So from linear motion, you know that the kinetic energy is just half of mv squared and you, you just take the sum for each mass. So for mass m1, mass m2, m3 and mi. So you can write this uh, using a sum on the of the half m i v i squared okay so uh, okay there's no problem with that uh, but we can what about these are uh, these are linear m, m uh, v is a linear variable so what about a rotational angular variables right so what what was good about um, angular variable is that theta omega and alpha do not depend on the position here we have v depend on the position okay there is this distance so mm, we might get something more simple expression of k so let's let's do it and check okay so we replace v by r omega in our expression of the kinetic energy okay v equal r omega and omega here does not depend on the point so it can be taken out omega squared can be taken out of the sum right so we have half in fact of omega squared multiplied by this sum and uh, this sum contains the mass and the distance of each particle so this is in fact we define this as the rotational inertia of our uh, system and it is a constant okay because m m are constants for each particle and their distance does not change so this is a constant so therefore a property of the system for a particular axis and we can write the kinetic energy in this way half of i omega squared and uh, keep we keep the si unit so don't forget that omega must be in radian 
So there is an easy uh, hint to remember this. Uh, remember that the kinetic energy for linear motion is half of mv squared, and m is inertia. Right? And here you have also i is inertia for rotation. So it's the same expression. It is half of inertia multiplied by velocity squared. So if you uh, for linear motion, you have half of m v squared. For rotational inertia, uh, rotational motion, you have uh, half of inertia is i, and velocity is omega. So very easy. If you know one, you know the other one. Okay. So this is our, our rotational inertia. So sometimes it is good to keep in mind which axis you consider because i will depend on the axis. So this is for axis delta. Okay. So it's very important to remember that your rotational inertia, or sometimes called moment of inertia, of the body is defined with respect to a given axis. Ok, so always specify that axis. Back to uh, this slide, you you realize that we can calculate the, the uh, angular inertia for any body you using an in in integration. But sometimes integration can be quite difficult. Uh, so let's, let's try to understand uh, rotational inertia. Why is it called inertia? So here we have two, body, uh, uh, two uh, bodies, the same, but the axis of rotation is different. So in this case, it is along the center of this uh, cylinder. So and we get this uh, rotational inertia. So if you try to rotate this uh, this body along uh, this uh, about this axis, here you you will you can imagine that this is quite easy. Okay, so it's easy to rotate. So, but if you take this one, this axis of rotation, you will find out that it is much harder to to put this uh, body into rotational motion than to put this one in motion. So, if you look at the rotational inertia, you have two terms, but this one is important. You have L squared and L is the length. So if you have a very long uh, piece of material like that, this this component will be very large. So and this will be uh, more difficult to put in rotation. So that's why this uh, I is associated to inertia. Okay and uh, okay why is uh, this inertia greater than in this case. Well, here, uh, of course, it, it the rotational inertia is the mass. If you take a point, it is the mass of that point multiplied by the square of the distance from the axis. So, and it is the square of that distance. So, this distance is very important, very critical in this case. So, the more mass. Finally, I would like to introduce the parallel axis theorem, which is used when uh, you have uh, to calculate the rotational inertia for uh, uh, an axis that is not uh, an axis of symmetry, in particular, for a given solid. So, uh, let's take the example of this, uh, this uh, body in yellow. So, the, the rotational inertia about axis uh, which goes for P here is equal to the rotational uh, inertia of, uh, of the same body uh, with, res with respect to an axis passing through the center of mass here, O in this case, which is parallel to the axis, m two axis must be parallel, plus M H squared. So M is the total mass of the body 
and h is the distance between the two axes. Okay. So it makes sense between bet because it is a mass multiplied by a distance squared. So it is indeed a rotational inertia. So we don't go for the uh, the derivation of this theorem here. It is very easy, in fact. Uh, you need uh, to remember what the center of mass is and uh, you can demonstrate it easily. To conclude, we have uh, a formula summary for pure rotation. So these, these are the formulas for the kinematics. We have the moment of inertia here and the parallel axis theorem, kinetic energy of pure rotation. And we, ha we have here the other formulas, uh, so a summary of the angular variables, linear variables, and how they are related. So three basic equations, the distance, the velocity, and acceleration. Okay. So now just uh, this is uh, a complement. Uh, <coughs> uh, we can we could have done what we have done in many slides in just one slide, assuming that we are familiar with uh, like polar unit vectors. Uh, polar unit vectors. So we can define. Defi define u r as a unit vector, a radial unit vector, and u t as a tangential unit vector. So, what we are looking for is the position of that point m. So it's, it is a vector c m. C is this point. So it is a. We can write it as vector r, which, which has magnitude r and u in the direction of u r. Okay, r is a constant. So now we okay, we want v velocity. So we take the derivative of that vector. So it's a product of a, a, a value here, a variable, which is constant in this case, and the vector. So you know how when we take the derivative of something, is the sum of the derivative of the first one, so we take the derivative of this and we keep this one, so we did this, plus we keep this one and we take the derivative of this one, so we get this. So in this case, r is constant, therefore this is zero, and we get only this one. Okay. So the question becomes, what is uh, d u r d t? So if uh, you look by uh, by uh, what happens when theta changes by a very small angle delta theta, you will find that d u r the change in u r is in fact d theta u t. Okay, and if you uh, therefore, dur divided by dt is equal to d theta uh, ut divided by dt, okay. Okay. which was written uh, here. Okay. You just divide this by dt. And uh, d theta dt is omega. Okay, so therefore, uh, d, uh, so replacing uh, okay, <laughs> sorry. Replacing this in this, you get v equal r omega ut, which is what we, ha we, we have obtained before. Okay. So uh, here I would like to point out that uh, instead of playing with this delta theta and uh, looking around what it could be, you could just use a general formula which states that the derivative of vector is equal to omega cross product with that vector. Okay, so in this particular case, d u r d t, you will have omega. So omega here is pointing towards us because it's rotating counterclockwise. 
so it's omega and u u is 1 the, the magnitude is 1 and the direction is given by the right hand rule and it is omega pointing up u it is ur so it is this one they are perpendicular so there is no sign coming from the cross product the sign is 1 and the direction is perpendicular to both vectors so it is ut so we find indeed omega uh, ut okay so what we can do the same to find the acceleration so now acceleration is dv dt derivatives of the vector so we start from this so r is a constant so doesn't count in some sense so again we take derivative of omega and we keep this one so d omega dt ut plus so we keep r and then we keep this one omega and we take the derivative of ut so we, we find this one so this one is okay we need to find the derivative of u uh, t so we can use this formula all right so d omega uh, dt is just alpha okay that's it already you see that r alpha is uh, the tangential component so and so this one is probably the centripetal component so we have already seen uh, in fact how this behave when we have uh, exp uh, find the centripetal acceleration but here we can use for example this formula so d u d uh, so we have omega and u t magnitude is 1 so omega is here u t uh, u t is here so it's perpendicular so the sign is 1 so we just have omega in magnitude and uh, uh, what about the direction so it's omega in this way u t there so it will point towards c so indeed it is a centripetal acceleration so you can also uh, write it in this way if you want delta ut is equal to minus delta theta ur and you find this so you replace your derivative here by minus omega ur so you will get an omega squared here and, and a negative sign which shows that your acceleration is pointing in this direction the negative compared to uh, the, the unit vector and in the end you find that your total acceleration is r alpha ut which is the tangential component minus r omega squared u r which is the centripetal acceleration okay so just in one slide using a vector analysis we can find uh, very quickly uh, all these formulas okay so i hope it is useful thank you for your attention